I'm with John Kearns, who won the Foster's Edinburgh Comedy Award Best Newcomer Award this year. He's also performing at the Soho Theatre and the Melbourne International Comedy Festival, so let's find out some more about him. Can you join? <laughs> so, after you won the award in Edinburgh, how have you found that audiences have compared since before and after you won the award? Um, if if it's announced that I've won the award before I go on, um, I feel there is a certain um, leeway. They, they give me a bit of time, whereas before, no time. I had to kind of earn it. So it does give you a little bit of a give, but um, if it's not mentioned, I can still uh, horrifically bomb on stage. <laughs> Would you ever say to a promoter, don't say that I won an award. Uh, is it, well, it's interesting because uh, if someone's introducing me, they say, do you want me to mention it? And um, at first I was like, no. But now I'm thinking there's only one year in my life where it can be mentioned. So... Uh, might as well take might it. Might as well. <laughs> yeah. So how have you found that London audiences compare to everywhere else that you've gigged in the country? Um, uh, they, they, they're more, they're notoriously harder, um, you know, the audience that you might be playing to in London might have seen Book of Mormon the night before, um, they might have, you know, you're competing with the best stand-ups in the world, uh, sometimes, you know, playing the Soho Theatre or like Forum at the Apollo, so they're more savvy, um, so if they don't like something, they're usually quite quick to, to, to tell you that. Uh, whereas if you play outside of London, um, I'm not saying they're happy to see you, but you know I did a, a uni uh, in, in uh, east of Wales, and it was like they hadn't seen another human for 10 years. They just couldn't believe that someone would come and perform for them. Um, so then when you come back to London, where everyone is, frankly, usually quite miserable, wet, and bored, and then you're going on with a wig, they're just like, and why am I doing this? But most of London audiences, as soon as the comedy night starts, go, oh, why, why did I, why am I here? And so you're saying that you... So you've got to earn it. So you've got to tell them, no, it's all going to be fine. You're going to have a good night. You've got to straight away tell them it's going to be fine. You're going to have a great evening, and this is why. And when you're on stage, you wear a wig and false teeth, and a lot of people think that it's a character, but it's not a character act. So what would you say to the people that think that you're doing some kind of character when you're on stage instead of straight stand-up? Um, I, I, can, I, can, I can see why someone might think it's, it's a character, but uh, because I I'm, I'm obviously don't look anything like myself... Um, two of the main things, I didn't give the personnel that I play on stage another name um, purely for the reason that I wasn't creating another character, it's basically a, a version of me up there. Um, I don't know, if you look at Francis Bacon paintings, there's these deformed faces, you know, even Picasso stuff where like there's an eye down here and, you know, it's kind of all these messed up kind of faces, I quite like the idea of doing that with my face. So the wig doesn't fit properly, the teeth are falling out sometimes. Um, everything is deliberately not, you know, like if you look at Partridge, one of the best characters ever created, you can almost, you can't see the lines, you know, the wig is perfect, the aesthetic of it. Whereas mine, you can see my real hair underneath the wig teeth fall out, I'm just putting on a higher voice. So I like playing with the idea that the audience is going, is this guy real? Is it a character? And that's basically what I tried to do in my show. And do you find that by doing a performance like that that you get heckled a lot? Uh, no, no, not at all. I, 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 um, Heckling is all about confidence and... Um, if people are too scared to heckle, they won't. Um, you don't obviously want to scare an audience, but you, if you portray a confidence 
Um, people won't usually chip in. I, I, I usually, I try and counter it. So most comics will maybe ask, what do you do for a living? I, I'll ask them what do they think I do for a living? So they're immediately like, what? Is it, aren't you a comedian? They're just like, what? It completely subverts what they think a comic should be on stage. So I don't usually get heckled a lot. I, I, I most of the time kind of heckle the audience. It's like I saw Dame Edna uh, two nights ago. No one would dare heckle Dame Edna. Do you know what I mean? She just comes out and usually takes the mick out of what women are wearing. And so everyone's just sitting there waiting for it. So I think I'd create an atmosphere where everyone knows something will come. And if someone does chip in, it's usually because they, they want to be involved. So I try and involve them as much as I can. Well, you've recently gone full time as a comedian, but before that you worked in the Houses of Parliament. Yeah. So how did you find that working as a tour guide in the Houses of Parliament affected your comedy? Uh, it, it, it gave me something to rally against. I think um, it's quite interesting not working at the moment because there's no... When I worked a full-time job, it, it doesn't matter where I worked, you, for that 10 minutes at the end of the day, you can let everything out. And then you've got to be up at half six, seven the next morning, then do a full day's work. And it allows the brain to tick away. So uh, it was great having a job because you're constantly fighting against it. And hopefully that makes good, good comedy, really. So what advice would you give to comedians who are semi-professional or completely new acts about going into comedy? Um, well, the great thing about London is that there's, there, you can gig every night. Um, I, I always, uh, if, if I'm ever asked this question, say that I, I don't think gigging every night is very helpful. <laughs> like, I, I don't know, like if you're starting out and you've got these five minutes, doing the same five minutes, seven, you know, people, people are doubling up when they just start out. For me, that didn't work. I just, if I gigged two, three times a week, I tried to do something new in all of those gigs. Um, and it also can be soul destroying if you're gigging in front of uh, 10 people seven nights a week, you know? So firstly, have a life, you know? I, um, I remember meeting a comic who uh, I asked him, he, he was full time. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. You make your living from comedy. And he was like, no, I, I make a bit, but just enough to get housing benefit as well. And I was like, I just couldn't believe that, that attitude, you know? You're not a full time comic. It's, it's, I'm not saying it's a hobby, but have a job. It's something that you do, and it should never be about the money, you know? I mean, I'm very lucky at the moment. I don't know what I'm going to be doing in six months, but at the moment, I'm a full-time comic. But it's good to have the discipline of work, um, because although I'm not living to that discipline at the moment, it makes me feel guilty about that. So if I do get a writing job, I, I hope that I can um, use those... Uh, those tools that I've learned. And for those people that want to do stand-up but have never done a gig and find the idea of performing on stage and telling jokes to people just too scary, what would you say to them? Um, well, you know, Woody Allen hated doing it. He was Woody <laughs> Allen. So uh, you've got to get over the feeling of it. If it's something you really want to do, then just do it. Um, no one is scared, that's the thing. The audience just want to have a good time. You just got to go up and want to have a good time as well. Of course you're going to be nervous, of course you're going to be scared, because it's an unnatural thing to do, to want to stand up and say, right, well, I'm going to make you laugh. But if you come up with a funny idea, or if you enjoy watching comics, or if you enjoy watching sitcoms and things, then um, that's how I got into it. I just enjoyed it and thought, well, I want to do that. I was lucky in that I realised that from a young age, but if you look at people's stories, like people like Rob Gilbert and, and John Bishop and stuff, comedy's full of people that just one night 
you know, drunk or through a bad experience they'd had during the day even, just got up and did it. So um, you can't pressure people. I think if you really want to do it, you, you'll end up doing it either, either way. And now that you're full time and you have time to focus on your writing, do you have a specific process that you go about when you write? Well, that, that's kind of uh, an interesting question at the moment because I, I, I'm, I have no structure in my life and it's... Um, it's it's put it, I just don't know I, I need to I keep on reading how um, you know the great writers like one would get up at 5 a.m. Uh, one would write in their bed one would go for a walk and write up a tree and so I'm, I'm trying to find my uh, litany but uh, I haven't found it at the moment I, I mean but when I was working the way I wrote my last show was if I had a thought I'd quickly write it down in my phone and put my phone away because I wasn't allowed to have it and then at the end of the day, if I had an hour to kill, I'd just go through my phone thinking, oh, that was quite good, that was it. So, again, it was that idea of fighting against something. I'm not really fighting against anything at the moment. I'm just kind of mumbling around. Um, Potentially up a tree. Uh, yeah, I'm going <laughs> to just build a tree house and sit up there, try and come up with something. I, it's, I, I'm still working that out, really. But I think it's a really interesting question because I, <laughs> I'm masking it myself. And you've got a three-week run coming up at the Soho Theatre and yeah. then you're also going to be performing at the Melbourne International Comedy Festival. So for people that have never seen your act before, how would you describe it to them? Um, well, The Guardian, uh, who I, they kind of like me in Edinburgh, but I kind of snuck up on them a little bit. Um, uh, they, they said I did well for someone who doesn't have one joke in their show, I t which I take great pride in, which is on my flyer for the, for the, for the solo run. It, it, there's not, it, it's not a joke show. It, it's feeling. It's, it's, I, I, it's kind of... Uh, I like to think it's got a lot of heart. And... Uh, I mean, it is funny. It's obviously funny, but um, I, I just—it's it's an hour in the company of somebody who you hopefully want to know a lot about and leave a knowing more about them and b hopefully wanting to maybe come back and you know see again really. Um, but it's just—it's stupid. Like the, the whole disguise thing, the work things. Like, like I wanted to write something funny and then. You know, the voice is hopefully quite funny. What I'm wearing looks funny. I'm just trying to, I try to, the maximum funniness I could do, you know. So I look funny, I sound funny, hopefully what I'm saying is funny, you know. I'm, I'm just trying to throw everything out there. Um, so, yeah. And obviously when you perform at Soho Theatre in Melbourne, you're doing an hour and yeah. it's just you on stage. But you also gig on lots of different bills around London and you perform a lot with Weirdos. And Weirdos is more of an alternative gig, but you also gig with more straight stand-ups. So do you prefer a specific kind of night when you gig? Uh, if you're on a bill with a lot of alternative weird people, uh, it depends where you are. If you're early on, the audience like that. If you're on later on, they're bored. They just want to hear some jokes. Um, mm. It's and always. You don't have jokes. I don't have any of them. It, it, it's, it's quite funny being in the middle of, um, not you know, straight stand up, because then you really do stand out as being odd, which is which is good. Um, but yeah, you know, the weirdos. They got compared to, they were called the next comic strip by a review the other day, and um, it, it's kind of true in that. It's ramshackle, it, at points it's awful, but there's a heart to it. And there's also an imagination that that doesn't exist on the circuit at the moment, I don't think. So, um, uh, yeah, the Weirdos group, I do stuff at the Invisible Dot. Um, and then I do, like, circuits around the country, like, uni-wise, um, where I regularly... Uh, disturb and annoy a lot of 19-year-old students. What is it about a student gig, do you think, that well, it's, disturbs It's really them? interesting. <laughs> they, they just, um, I do, I do, they're just, 
they're 19, they've never been to a comedy before. I'd never been to a comedy gig uh, until I was about 20. So they have this preconceived idea of what they want. And uh, that preconception comes from watching BBC Three comedy. Um, you know, an 18, 19 year old hasn't heard of Bill Burr or uh, um, Patrice O'Neill or, you know, like comic comics. They know the DVDs that are sold in shops and stuff, the majority of them. So when they see me walk on, I'm in no way comparing myself to those people, <laughs> but I'm not what they've seen before. And so it's quite weird how you think, well, if you're, there's this whole idea of, you know, 18, 19 year olds, they are the most conservative audience you can play to. Um, they get weirded out, they think you're odd, you're stupid. You're almost a bit like a dad dressing up. They kind of, they, they don't want it. Um, so it, it's, it's been really interesting to see that. Um, they don't seem to have a sense of humour. So what advice would you give to students then who are thinking of... Just don't think to... about it. Don't think about it. You know, when, when, you, when, you, when you're at uni, everything has to mean something, you know. You've, you're reading... I can't even remember the name of this... Some penguin classic. Just you are so annoying. And I generally I go up and I'm like I'm all right. I can see them. They're looking at me. I know who they are. And I mean I do just start shouting at them. Just like I don't want to do this. I, I don't you know. And then they start cheering when I get angry. <laughs> like I, I have people f deleting me on Twitter as I speak. And I'm like, are you are you is anyone here? To, then they start. F they completely play with me, but that's fun. Um, they, they just don't overthink stuff, you know. Well, they, speaking they're trying of, to be too cool. Well, speaking of Twitter, do you find that a Twitter is a useful tool for you to help, not necessarily write jokes, but develop your material? Um, no, I, I, for me, no. Um, there's other comics like Adam Hess, Rhys James. Beck Hill. Beck Hill. Yeah, she, the, the, they use Twitter um, religiously. You've got, you've, got to, you've got to use it all the time, really. I, I, I don't know if it's done anything uh, for me. So last year you were in the production of Hook, which was a weirdo's production, and you've yeah. also starred in The Colonel. So do you prefer acting or stand-up? Um, I prefer stand-up because you have more control. Simple as that, right? You can write something and then uh, if you really want to that night, go out and perform it. Um, the, the worst thing about acting is if you're in something that isn't great, you have to do that again and again every night. And just as where a comedian knows where a laugh is gonna come, if you're acting in something that's awful, that you can't change, you know when a bad bit's coming. And there's nothing worse than having to give such conviction to something that you know everyone is really hating. So I, the freedom of stand-up is, is obviously the appeal. Um, but I do love acting though, purely because as a counter to stand-up, I can give my brain a rest a little bit. And if it's an amazing play, like I did plays at uni and stuff, and if, if you're doing like Pinter or Becky or something, it's obviously an incredible piece of art. So to be able to uh, stand side by side with that and perform it um, is obviously, I think, I think acting is a great, if it's a good piece, can be a, a privilege. Um, so I, I enjoy both, but, but stand up, is, it's, it's the idea of having that freedom to write whatever and say whatever you want. Um, I much prefer it for that. Well, as you said, you'd never really been to a comedy gig before you were about 20 years old. Mm. When was the moment when you thought to yourself, I want to be a comedian? Well, um, I, I, I kind of always wanted to, I always wanted to do, I, people always, uh, I, I always wanted to, to perform comedy. I'm, the earliest memory I kind of have was being when I was about six, seven years old kind of thing. Um, where I, I, I didn't really, my mate Jack Fraser, he'd come around for tea, and I remember just, 
you got to have a good laugher as a mate. I think all stand-ups had a mate who has the best laugh. Because there's nothing better when you're a kid making a friend laugh who's... Like, he would cry and he'd, he'd just run around laughing too much. And so I'd just keep going until he'd say stop. And it was, it was a great... I remember learning early on how, how powerful it could be, like a tool. Um, so, uh, obviously I didn't know I wanted to do it then for a living. Um, it's only when I was in like 15, 16, maybe in plays and stuff, and I was, uh, you then start reading about comics and you start, you start looking up people. You're just like, oh, this could be a, is this a living? Is this a life you could live? And then you just think, well, you know, if you think about, think about how many footballers there are in the world. Like, there's a lot of footballers. There's a lot of people that direct movies. There's a lot of people that are chefs. You know, it's not, there isn't one, obviously there's one Lionel Messi, there's one Ronaldo. But do you know what I mean? Like, if you want to do something, I think you, you can do it. It's up to you how good you are, but you can do it. One John Cairns. But there's one Sarah Shulman. <laughs> um, you know, do you know what I mean, though? It's, so I, I, I didn't really ever think, I've been very lucky in that I've just, I've just gone from thing to thing to thing, but it's because I never really doubted that it couldn't be done. I didn't know how it could be done, but I never thought it wasn't an option. Well, in saying that when you had Jack Fraser around and you wanted to make him laugh, yeah. when audiences come and see you now, yeah. is there something that you hope to achieve from making them laugh? Is there something that you want them to take away specifically when they've come to watch you? Um, you just want them to think you're good. I know that sounds awful, but you, you just want them to have had a good time, you know? And you also want them to tell other people, to remember it, also to leave, taking away different things. Like, I like the idea that, you know, sometimes I do a gig, there's a couple in the front row, the girlfriend could be laughing the head off, the boyfriend doesn't understand what she's laughing at. I've had that a lot, do you know what I mean? Where they, <laughs> people are looking at each other going, well, what? I'm looking at him, I don't like what he's doing, but that person over there is crying. I really like playing with that. Um, but I also hope that, because it just creates a, I like, I like playing with that, you know, why, why, why am I? Because that person there is going, why aren't I getting it? And they're looking at me going, what am I not getting? And I don't think there's a great deal to get. So. I like the idea that a discussion could become up after it. Um, you know, it, it, I don't want it to be. Oh, I love, I love comics. That it's just like your mate down the pub. I, I have not. Why would you spend any money seeing someone who's like a mate down the pub? It doesn't. It, doesn't, it just doesn't make sense to me. What I like the idea of a comedian being. If it wasn't being done on stage, if it was being done on the street corner, people would be like. The guy's insane. But because it's a foot above everyone else, they think it's some kind of art. I quite like that idea of if it wasn't happening on a stage, <laughs> you'd be arrested or something. So having performed to all these different types of audiences, mm. would you say that you have a favorite type of audience to perform to? Um, it's difficult because you could, I used to, judge an audience completely, thinking, oh, this is going to be awful, and it turns out to be okay, so... Um, you want, the, the only thing, you want people who want to be there, and then everything else is down to you, you know? It can be an audience's fault if ten of them don't want to be there, you know? They've been dragged along, they're there to see a mate. You know, you never know what's going on in someone's life as well. They might be going through a really tough time, the brain might be completely out there. The last place they want to be is listening to you. And obviously that's difficult for you then. It's not your fault as a performer. It's not their fault because they've got stuff going on. It shouldn't be happening. <laughs> so it's important that the audience want to be there. And then it's down to whoever's on stage, really. And as a stand-up, people often say that you're learning all the time. Every gig you do, you learn something. Would you say that there's 
something that you've learned recently having won the award or would you say that you learned more when you were first starting out in comedy mm, um you you obviously learn a huge amount when you start out um but the thing that I'm learning at the moment is, well, I'm, 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 at the moment I'm questioning, do I, I've obviously created something that works, do I stick with that, or do I kind of do a radio head and scrap the melodies and do some electronic nonsense that no one likes and then come back with it, do you know what I mean? I, I, have, I feel as though I have this tendency to go, right, well that's done, even if it's successful, to put it away, start again. So it, it, it's funny, it, I've learned to basically be a bit more professional. Um, um, so, you know, learning how to play to audiences that might not get my stuff and try and win them round. Whereas before, I, could, I was playing to weird alternative nights in London where people get you. Now I'm playing to like, Two, three hundred people who genuinely might hate me, and the idea is to get out of there alive, basically, to turn it round. So I'm learning that skill, not to be so, um, not to play to the audiences that I know are just going to get it. Have you found that there's been a technique that you've used to try and win round an audience, or have you just had to sort of feel it in the night? Uh, the, yeah, no, the technique is to commit to the character, to the, 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 what you've created, you know. Never, it doesn't matter who they are, you can't, you can't change for anyone. So, but I mean, also, when you win an award, it, it's, it's someone saying what you're doing is okay. So that, that has given me a confidence, because before I won the award, I, Obviously, people said lovely things, but I didn't have any, you know, there were, it was still a risk. And it is still a risk, but having the award behind me is giving me a confidence now where I'm like, I know I'm right, you're wrong. And audiences like that, because it's like, okay, maybe I am. So you've got to stay committed. And, you know, if, you, if, you, if they all hate you, then what can you do? And you've explained what you hope audiences to take away after they've seen you perform but what would you hope to achieve as a comedian um uh well i was asked this the other day and i've been thinking basically i i, wa I want to work with like the best people i can that's kind of what i thought like obviously everyone would like to do everything you know i'd i'd love to uh write radio stuff, I'd love to be in a sitcom, I'd love to do theatre, movies, I'd like to write a kid's book, you know, I'd, I'd like draw, you know, I'd love to do all of that, but who wouldn't? I, I'd like to work with the best people, so I've got friends that direct plays that are amazing at editing, videoing things, uh, some of my best friends are comedians, uh, like the Weirdos group putting on the production every year for charity. Uh, they are on a level with, you know, people like my heroes, like comedic heroes that I've grown up watching, going, wow, you know, I'd, I'd love to do something with them one day. So if at the end of my career I can look back and see that I've worked with amazing people, um, then I'd be happy, you know. If you want to catch John Kearns, you can see him at the Soho Theatre from the 13th of January to the 31st of January. And you can follow him on Twitter, at John's Fur Coat.